Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Wagner and from the Baltimore City Health Department. And today I will be discussing developing, implementing, and sustaining quality improvement efforts within a network within the Baltimore EMA. My colleagues are Roderick Sumter, Joan Carey, Ricky Moyd, and Alberta Lynn Ferrari. So the Baltimore City Health Department is the direct recipient of the Ryan White Part A Minority AIDS Initiative funding. There are over 12,000 consumers that are served in the Baltimore EMA, and we comprise of 28 subrecipients. It is necessary for recipients to have a comprehensive clinical quality management program that seeks to improve health outcomes, patient satisfaction, and patient care. A variety of technical assistance and continuous learning opportunities should be available for staff, subrecipients, and consumers. Cross-partner collaborations are also key to sustaining improvement. So BCHD instituted several activities, and a part of that were three main activities. BCHD developed several tools and techniques to provide technical assistance to subrecipients. Those activities included developing a quality management plan, quality narrative, a PDSA template, a root cause analysis template, and a data drill down tool. The second activity was to institute the QI subcommittee. The QI subcommittee is to sustain a culture of quality improvement among the Ryan White office, subrecipients, and consumers within the Baltimore EMA. There are four phases of the QI subcommittee, and it started in April 2017. We are currently continuing with the QI subcommittee, and we will be beginning our fourth phase in September 2022. The third activity was to lead a cross-network QI team to conduct QI projects, and that was through the Baltimore EMA Movers and Improvers. So our BCHD CQM technical assistance has several results. The technical assistance that has been administered to subrecipients has been collected, our information has been collected through several different means. We use information from our quarterly narratives, our monthly calls, our QM plan review tools, and also our quarterly narratives and QI project submissions. That TA can be broken down into short-term and long-term TA. Examples of short-term TA include helping subrecipients understand specific QI methodology and also helping them address resistance to quality management efforts. Examples of short-term TA include helping our subrecipients become more involved with their consumers and also helping them with their quality management program infrastructure. There have been several results of our technical assistance that has helped our subrecipients with their QI projects. There are two I'd like to highlight. One occurred with a housing provider, and with that provider, we were able to increase knowledge of tenants' rights and responsibilities through training that increased from 67% to 100%. And then also we were able to decrease the clinic no-show rate at one agency from 41% to 17%. With our QI subcommittee, there were several outcomes that were achieved through our different phases. I'd just like to highlight a couple. From phase one, one of the outcomes achieved was that there was communal learning with, amongst the staff. With phase two, we were able to help our subrecipients make quality improvement progress on their QI projects. With phase three, one of the outcomes was that we were able to build team leadership skills to help our subrecipients to independently conduct QI projects and provide basic QI training also along with their consumers. And with fourth, the fourth phase, we are beginning in September 2022, and the outcomes of that are to be determined. And here you can see these are examples of some of the topics that we have covered and this is specifically with our third phase of our QI Learning Collaborative. And lastly, the results from our Baltimore EMA Movers and Improvers Collaborative, we undertook two main projects. And so those two main projects were, we were able to institute health literacy and engagement, and clients were able to participate in using goal reminder cards to help them with their goals. As a result, 80% of our participating clients completed tasks within one to two week time frame. And then amongst our patient self-care plans, there were two PDSA cycles. The last PDSA cycle, we were able to actually institute a, 
a self-care day event, and we were able to have our clients complete their self-care plans at the event. The self-care plan is to help them assess their own strengths, what's important to them, and their goals. And as a result, 11 out of our 11 clients who attended did complete their self-care plans, and all 11 clients said that they felt more engaged in their care. And it's important to note that our EMA movers and approvers consist of Part A. We also consist of Part B subrecipients, Part C, and Part D clinics. So in conclusion, I'd like to point out that QI prioritization has been challenged by changing priorities within the COVID-19 pandemic, and that has resulted in staff shortages. However, in order for us to build upon our success, it is vital to uh, work within a large network and work together with collaborations. It's also important to help align your QI priorities. And it's important to note that Further expansion of remote and flexible learning opportunities is even more important due to the current public health climate. Thank you.